Yeah, 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 yeah. Exchange Church, how are you this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. How are you this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the ladies in the place. Happy Mother's Day. Why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you high five 17 people? High five 17 people. Say welcome to church. Tell them, man, you look good today. Man, you look so good today. Neil always looks good. Neil always looks good. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Exchange. We are going to worship in this place. We are going to give God our best praise this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning. I pray that your spirit would fill this place even right now and that we would worship you in spirit and truth, that there would be a sense of freedom, that there would be a sense of liberty in this place. And again, we would just meet with you. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Come on, let's worship church. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. Sing away. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, exchange. Here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who. That is who you are. 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 Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. 
Let's worship the King this morning. You can do it. Woo! That is who you are. 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 You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you, we worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You're the name above all names, Jesus, we worship you. A way maker, take my life, take my
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. time guys I'm a child of God yes I am man oh man he's so good to us I did want to say something kind of special for Mother's Day because they've been talking about how much the women mean so much to us here at exchange and leading up to this Mother's Day so Thank you to the pastors for bringing so much awareness and gratefulness for me. Um, I'll tell you what, I've been blessed to have awesome moms in my life. Woo! Okay. Um, so I was creating some uh, scheduling drama earlier this week, and I was like, I don't know if I can go. I got to go to my mom's church for Mother's Day. I want to go see my mom sing at her church, right? And so I called mom. I said, I got the week off. She goes, oh, no, I got the week off. I'm coming to watch you play. Well, you know what I mean? So everyone say hi to my mom over there. Hi, She's mom. an epic worship leader of all time. And it's like, I don't know, I'm just, I just look up to her. I look up to, the, you know. And I loved having a mom so much that uh, I had to marry one after that. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I need another one. But, man, awesome, awesome women taking care of us, keeping us organized, loving, fearless, cur courage right on our toes and stubborn right oh man we're so lucky so lucky oh we worship you god there's nothing else there's nothing else i'd rather have Nothing else will do You make me brand new I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't owe me anything but more than anything I just want you I'm sorry. I'm sorry When I 
I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry When I said another song Take me back to where we started I opened up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence Now I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy You don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want you just want you. I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else just want you in this place, God. Nothing else. I love these sweet moments of worship where, again, it's just our hearts to yours, where we can praise you and we can submit to you and surrender to you in our worship. We just want you, God. 
We just want you. There's nothing else that fills the, the gaps, fills the holes. It's only your love and your grace, your goodness towards us. So we're thankful. We're so thankful. We love you. And we're going to high five a couple more people around us and say, Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. High five some people. Welcome to church. You guys can grab a seat. You guys can grab a seat. Yeah, so good. What's going on, guys? My name is Drew, and I'm uh, super glad that you are at Exchange Church with us today. I don't have anything to do today, so I'm feeling a little like I'm doing announcements. <laughs> I need to, someone give me a microphone. No, I'm just playing. Welcome to Exchange Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are here. So cool. Thanks for coming through. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies, to all the grandmas and the spiritual moms and the moms-to-be and all the ladies in the place. We love you. We love you. Lauren is here with her twins for the very first Sunday which is beautiful. They got their little he headphones on, and it's so good. Hey, we want you to do just a, a quick a few things for us. We want you to follow us on social media, just so you know what is going on at Exchange Church. Find us at exchange.church on Instagram. You can find us just by searching Facebook, everything that's going on. And there's a few things that are coming up. June 11th, we have a golf tournament going on at Fox Glen, which is now called Coachwood, uh, but it is going to be a good time. If you are on my team, you are going to win. That's probably not true, uh, but uh, it is going to be a great time. We're going to be posting about that, you know, for uh, a solid month. We're going to be working on that. Uh, he here's the thing. Uh, I just, let me just t tell you this. I put out a simple ask to someone who I know is a person of affluence, and I was like, hey, we're doing a golf tournament, and this is going to the west end of Windsor, where we're going to be doing our goodness project at the end of the year. A lot of you know about the goodness project already, and he says, count me, and I'm in for 500 bucks. Boom. Just like that. Just like like that. So I know you know, or you know someone that, you, that knows somebody that knows somebody that has uh, some affluence and can uh, continue to help us raise awareness and raise some money for our golf tournament. It's going to be a great, great time. Um, and uh, we have some prayer and praise cards. We have some connect cards in the seats uh, in front of you. We want to let you know that we are a praying church and we're constantly praying for you. Nola is always doing a great job letting us know what we need to pray for. So Nola, you are a rock star and we also are are we're praising along with you we're thankful can i share a quick testimony it's not mine it's 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 jalen's give it up for jalen by the way so Jalen, Jalen is in my small group, and I just want to, like, again, I honor you, bro, the touch of the prophetic that is on your life, the way you walk in it, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, you are, like, always a couple steps ahead of me, and I'm just like, ooh, I like it. And so Jesus is, is working in you and through you. This is what happened really, really quickly, is Jalen's like, yo, I am here from the States, um, and I am a part of, like, this team, but because I'm on this team, but I'm from the States, they, the college won't actually give me the money that is due to me and so it's a little frustrating because with the pandemic and with um, the the basketball you guys went all the way to the nationals congratulations uh, by the way and so life is busy life is busy uh, but you can't make that money and you got to pay rent and there's a conversation about like hey uh, the people that I'm living with they want a dog so like I can't pay rent right now but I'm good for the dog you're like oh prayers up fingers crossed don't disappoint the kids and so he's in this weird spot, and, and he just gets this nudge where he's like, you know what, I need to go talk to the administration office at the, at the college, and I'm, I just need to ask, hey, can I get that $1,500? Can I just, $1,800? Can I just get that $1,800? I know the American thing, and like, that's not my fault. That's where I was born, you know. Don't hold it against me. We love you. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and so this is what happens. Come on. And, and, and just know that there's more behind it. He's praying into it. He's seeking wisdom. He's seeking discernment. And uh, they say, G give me a second. So he takes a seat, and he, he's waiting for a half hour. He's waiting for some time. And the lady comes back and she says this, listen, we can't give you your $1,800. I'm sorry, we can't do that. But there's a bursary. There's a, there's a scholarship that no one has even like came, no one has applied for, no one's talked about it. There's, it's just sitting there and actually it's, it's, it's past due. Like I don't, I don't even know if we can do anything for you. But hey, why don't, why don't you try out for this? Why don't you write us a 500 word essay on uh, the Ukraine, I think it was, or 
Yeah, so it, so it just it, incredible. I'm like, you know, fingers crossed, prayers up. Uh, $10,000 in his pocket. $10,000 in his pocket. And I'm sorry, I don't know how that hits you. I know that gets me excited. But this is a man, come on, and, and this is a church body. This is our family. And so, again, this is for you. This is a man of faith who, again, is walking with God and discerning and just stepping into situations where it's like, I'm just looking for $1,800. I'm just looking for, like, a chunk of this $10,000 in Jesus' name. Into I think someone's getting a dog. I think someone's getting a, I think someone's getting a puppy. So again, we want to we want to praise along with you. We want to cheer you on. And again, uh, whether the talk about money freaks you out or not, I just know my God is bigger than we sometimes uh, give Him credit for. And so we're just believing for great things in your uh, life. And so with that, uh, just to encourage you if you want to uh, give to Exchange Church, there's a few ways to do. It. You can e-transfer give at ecwindsor.com. Look how easy that is, Chris. And uh, I love you. I'm just playing. I just playing. I just playing. Or you can go on our website, ecwindsor.com, click the giving link, and there's a few options um, there. I am going to pray. We're going to get back into worship. And this morning we have a very, very special guest speaker who uh, we love and is a part of this family. And so let's uh, stand to our feet. We're going to pray. We're going to worship one more time, and then we will get into the Word. But God, thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for what you're doing at Exchange Church. Uh, thank you for testimonies, God, where we are looking for a little bit and you give a lot uh, because that's who you are that's your goodness and uh, yeah and God we just pray that even in this moment if there is someone in this place who needs a, a, a physical touch just a, just a, your, your touch of healing your touch of grace Rachel if if I can we pray for your mom over in the UK and we just speak health and wholeness and healing into her body and, um, and yeah, so uh, God, just do what only you can do. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. 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 Come on, church, let's worship.
him because of who he is amen just a little teaching moment for you really quickly because this is a beautiful moment but we worship him because of who he is but I also believe that our, our surrender begets blessing that our worship begets blessing and we don't we don't worship to get blessed we worship because of who, who he is don't get it twisted don't get it twisted we worship because of who he is but man like sometimes we sing these big words and these big thoughts. Here I am. You can have it all. Who's singing lies this morning? You know what I mean? Like, oh, a little conviction. 
you can have it all. But man, where is your heart this morning in that? God, help us this morning learn to give you our all. Because I know for a fact that Pastor Drew's not there. And I can, I can imagine that so many people just aren't there yet. And we're not called to perfection or to performance, God, but we're called to chase after your heart and to find you in moments like these so that we can become more like your son. And so we worship you for who you are. And we change our posture even right now, and we actually say you can have it all. And help us walk that way. Help us live that way. Show us those things in our lives that are are lacking and in places that are in need of you. And so, God, we love you and we thank you for what you're doing in moments like these. We thank you again for Mother's Day. Just a special blessing on all the moms, all the women in this place. We honor them as you honor them, as you love them. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Amen. Exchange Church, you are incredible. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Everyone doing good this morning? Yeah, so good. Hey, I just want to welcome uh, this morning uh, as she wraps up her her earphones and everything. She's on double duty uh, this morning. But uh, Larissa Geniak, everyone, can you give a hand for... I'm going to call her Pastor Larissa. I'm going to go there. Pastor Larissa, um, yeah, so many moons ago, um, Pastor Brad uh, took me out for, for Buffalo Wild Wing. I'll never forget it. We were on the patio. That sun was shining just like today. Garlic Parmesan, Garlic yeah. That's the glory. That's Jesus in the kitchen just cooking it up. It's good. And, uh, and he said, hey, I have a worship pastor who is going on maternity leave. Do you think you want her job? And I said, sure. And then I realized what big shoes I had to fit. Not really. Like, you're fine. Everything's, yeah, everything's I fine. It. I got it. But Pastor Larissa was a worship pastor at LSA for so long. And, and really, and I mean this, this isn't just like the classic, like it's Mother's <laughs> Day and stuff. But uh, she actually has such a mothering spirit to her. And when I, when I say that, what do I mean? I mean, she She's actually so caring. She's so loving. She's so nurturing. Where I'm like, hey, you missed the wrong chord. Lewis is like, okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do. No, I love it. You are incredible. We honor you. We're glad that you're in the house. Freedom to preach and to teach and to do your thing. Give it up for Pastor Larissa as she comes this morning. Well, good morning, Exchange Church. Hey, hey. I'm so grateful to be with you this morning uh, to celebrate Mother's Day and to spend time together in the Word of God. As Pastor Drew said, uh, my name is Larissa, and I have been a friend of your church basically since you were born. Maybe, maybe when you were like, you know, we were pre- still pregnant with Exchange, right? I was friends with you then. Normally when I come around, it's to hang out with the band, so I'm really honored that uh, Pastor's Brad and Drew have asked me to come out and share my heart with all of you this morning. And of course, the main reason I'm here uh, is that it's Mother's Day and I'm a girl. (laughs) And I happen to be a mom as well of three amazing, wonderful, but also very busy and energetic boys. There they are. They are cute, but they will deceive you. Um... Like you hear in most families, I have three boys who are all very different. I mean, I think you hear this a lot. All the kids are very different. Cameron, my eldest, is 12. He's uh, my sports guy. He's super into books and stats and anything to do with Sidney Crosby. And my middle guy is Ryan. He's that sweet one with the glasses. And uh, he's kind of the outdoorsy one who wants to garden and be outside. And last but certainly not least is my little guy, David, who at the age of four is probably already the coolest person I know. (laughs) And he'll tell you as well. His biggest interest these days are dinosaurs because he's four, and uh, uh, which is great, except that I had to be the one to break his four-year-old little heart when the poor kid asked me if we could go to the zoo to visit the dinosaurs. We had to have a difficult conversation about what the word extinction means. But since, here he's figured it out though, but since we just celebrated Easter, he is convinced 
that since Jesus was raised from the dead, God can also bring back the dinosaurs. Which I've tried to explain to him is a very bad idea and that we should not pray for that. But he is not old enough to watch Jurassic Park to figure that out. So a few years down the road. And of course, I should also introduce the other man in my life. This is my husband, Dennis. And uh, we've been married for 14 years. And uh, it was actually Pastor Brad who married us all those years ago. And we dug into my wedding album and found a picture of all of us together. Isn't that great? So if you were losing sleep about what Brad looked like in 2007, you're welcome. The answer was less gray, right? (laughs) Nettie looks exactly the same. Hasn't changed. Now, I know the last couple of weeks you've been unpacking the story of a pretty amazing woman in the Old Testament by the name of Ruth. But today, I'd like to focus on another woman of the Bible. But this time, we're going to shift from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And since today is Mother's Day we are going to concentrate on the story of a mom. Now, some would call this woman the most important mom who ever lived, someone whose motherhood changed the course of history and whose choice to bear a child had profound consequences for humanity. Now, if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm sure some of you have. The woman I'm talking about is, of course, Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of our Lord, the mother of the Savior of the world. She has some pretty intimidating titles. Now, I know Mary doesn't usually get as much attention this time of year. Usually, we most often think about her at Christmas time. But in light of Mother's Day, I would just love for us to take some time to examine the motherhood of Mary and ponder what we as individuals can learn from her story. And I want to begin uh, where her journey of motherhood begins in the scripture. So if you have your Bible or your phone with your Bible app or your tablet, I want to invite you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 26 to 38. Now, this is the story commonly referred to in Christian tradition as the Annunciation, where an angel by the name of Gabriel comes to a virgin and announces that the one the Jewish people have been waiting for, the Messiah, the Anointed One, would be born to her. So let's start at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now let's pause here for just a moment and just unpack a few little things. A heavenly messenger, a messenger of the Lord Most High, has been sent from heaven to earth And of all the places he's going to go, it's to a town called Nazareth, which in first century Palestine is basically this obscure town in the middle of nowhere. To put it in perspective, it's sort of like if God in our present time sent an angel to Canada, and then instead of going to one of our big cities like Ottawa or Toronto, or to some tourist hotspot like the Rocky Mountains or Prince Edward Island, instead that angel is sent to Essex County, and let's say to the town of Harrow. (laughs) Now, I like Harrow. I mean, we all like Harrow, but let's be real. I mean, there's just not much happening in the town of Harrow, not making national news anyways. And uh, there's not much happening in the town of Nazareth either. When an angel shows up to speak to a woman who is likely very young and very poor. And yet immediately upon finding her, the first thing he does is to make a declaration to her about her identity about who she is, about how God sees her. Look back at the text with me. This is verse 28. Greetings, you who are highly favored. In other translations, it's sometimes translated as you who are full of grace. Now, the term in Greek here that's used is it's quite striking. The word that we translate into highly favored one or one who is full of grace is this one word phrase that's kakeratomene. It's got grace, charis, embedded in it. It means one who has obtained grace or been graciously accepted. One who has received grace in its fullness. 
one who is found to be in mercy. I also love the way that Eugene Peterson translates this passage in the Message Bible. His version says, Gabriel greeted Mary, good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. You'll often hear a sort of cliche phrase that's used in the church world that basically says, you know, God doesn't call the equipped, but he equips the called. But along with the equipping, we also see in scripture time and time again that when God calls an individual into something, he also very often reframes how they see themselves. Casting a greater vision of who they are or who they could be when rooted in him. And that's what the Lord is doing here with Mary. He is having his angels speak words of life and purpose and clarity around who she is before he calls her into what he would have her do. As we serve the Lord, we must remember that when he calls us into something, he first claims us as his own and that we must find our identity in him first and foremost. Who you are in Christ comes before what you are called to do. And what you are called to do flows out of who you are. Can I say that again? Who you are in Christ comes before what you are called to do. And what you are called to do flows out of who you are. Now, like any of us would be, I think, if we were visited by, you know, an angel, divine being, Mary is quite shocked and perhaps even shaken by this encounter because it says in verse 29 that when Mary was greatly troubled at his, meaning the angel's words, and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But before she can sit in that discomfort too long, the angel encourages her to not be frightened. He once again reminds her of who she is and then gives her the message he's been sent to deliver. Let's pick it up at verse 30. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. There's that word again, favor. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now Mary responds to all of this, which it's a lot, right? With a pretty practical question to the angel of how. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. She knew a little bit, a thing or two, right? This isn't how it works. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Now, other than that one very practical question about how all of this is going to happen, Mary, up until this point, has basically just been listening to the angel speaking. When she does get the chance to respond, she could have asked a lot more questions. I think I would have asked a lot more questions, maybe just me. She could have responded with doubt or become overwhelmed by anxiety. She could have responded with fear. And like Moses before the burning bush just said, Lord, please find someone else to do this. But Mary doesn't respond with any of this. Instead, she says very simply in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Wrapped within her response are two very important elements I want us to take note of. One, she declares herself the servant or handmaiden of the Lord. The term that she uses here is this word doule in the Greek, and it's one that's usually applied to female bond servants or slaves. Notice the contrast in terms used to describe her by the angel and then the term that Mary uses to define herself. While he calls her the kakeratomene, the highly favored one, Mary in her humility identifies herself as a humble servant, submitting to the will of the one. 
Second, she states, may your will to me be fulfilled, or in other translations, it's often written, let it be to me according to your word. So not only has she taken this posture of submission and surrender to the will of God, but she also expresses an eager desire to see its fulfillment. And all of this speaks to the depth of her love and trust in her heavenly father. I think with modern eyes, we might easily miss the courage that Mary's response would have taken. I mean, an angel visited her and told her she was going to have a baby. Sounds like wonderful news to us. And yet when we remember the context of this story, the implications of having a baby and not having a husband in first century Jewish culture are far more disastrous. We can read a parallel account of the infancy narrative in the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And and just to quickly paraphrase, uh, around verses 18 and 19, it says that when Mary is found to be pregnant, her betrothed, Joseph, or engaged would be more of our modern equivalent. Uh, In ancient Jewish culture, just as an aside, uh, betrothals were far more legal covenants that couldn't be easily broken, and the couple would essentially be considered almost married but not yet living together. So Joseph, her betrothed, is described as this just man who is going to divorce her in secret because he doesn't wish to have her publicly disgraced. But if he'd chosen to, Joseph would have been within his rights under Jewish law to not only publicly shame Mary, but to have her brought before the court of law and punished for adultery. And the punishment is outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 22. It's in verse 23 to 25, if you want to read it for yourself. It's actually death, so the penalty is pretty steep. Now, we know that the story has a happier ending than that, that the angel appears to Joseph and encourages him not to abandon Mary, and eventually we have the beauty of the babe in the manger. But we need to understand that what we know happened in hindsight was not something Mary was assured of. Mary's consent to God's plan, her yes and amen to being the mother of the Messiah, reflect a willingness on her part to lay down her own plans, her own hopes, her own dreams, and to surrender them before the will of God in order to fulfill his plan and his purposes instead. And that yes was going to cost her something. It would perhaps cost her her reputation. It would most likely cost her many of her relationships and perhaps even cost her her very life. And yet without expressing a single doubt, she responds with trust to the one who she knew would not abandon her the one who is faithful and true and who keeps his promises, the one who would not make such an ask of her and yet not have a plan to see its fulfillment. And even though God certainly intervened where Joseph was concerned, Mary carrying and bearing God's son was still always going to be joyfully difficult. I mean, we have such a nostalgic view of Christmas, don't we, with our manger scenes and our trees and our lights and eating for a solid month, all in honor of the baby Jesus obviously. But we forget that the journey to Bethlehem was probably pretty arduous. In fact, I know it was pretty arduous. I remember being nine months pregnant. Very arduous, whatever you're doing, (laughs) let alone traveling to Bethlehem. The birth in the stable was never going to be ideal, and the years of being on the run and living in exile in Egypt were probably pretty challenging. I think that sometimes we as followers of Jesus me included, assume that when he gives us a mission or he leads us in a certain direction that everything's going to be up and to the right. That since he's called us, then that means things will be less challenging or, or we will experience less difficulty. He's going to, you know, make straight the paths. But frankly, that's not exactly rooted in a biblical understanding of what it means to be guided by God's will and living for him rather than for ourselves. I mean, yes, he promised us he will stay with us. He's not going to abandon us or forsake us. And yes, there will be seasons where it will feel like when we lean into surrendering to him more and more that we will experience great blessing and consolation in that. But there are so many examples in the scriptures where God calls people into hard places and difficult seasons where they must continually lean on him and look to him for strength. I think one of the most profound examples of this we can find in Luke chapter 22, 
verse 42, when our Lord himself, the evening before his crucifixion in the Garden of Gethsemane, prays in agony, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. But look how he concludes that prayer, yet not my will, but yours be done. A prayer that so beautifully echoes the response of his own mother to the angel Gabriel. Church, you must know that as God calls you into deeper obedience, there will be a cost to saying yes. But it will always be worth it. We as believers can trust that God has a bigger plan. We may not understand everything he asks of us or all the circumstances of our lives, but we can anchor our hope onto the reality that God is good, that we are loved, and that he has a purpose for everything, even the things that don't always make sense. Romans 8, 28 tells us, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Mary responds with trust because she knows the Lord. She knows that he loves her, and she knows that all good things come from his hand. Now, if we had the time, we could examine a number of other biblical passages that include Mary in order to learn from her continued example of faith. But for our purposes, the last one I'd like to focus on, it's just a glimpse of her. Just a snapshot that's found in John chapter 19, and this is verse 25. Prior to this scene, Jesus has been condemned to death. He's been marched outside the city of Jerusalem to a hill called Golgotha. He has been stripped of his clothing and finally crucified between two thieves. And it's in the midst of this scene that we find his mom standing at the foot of the cross. The very beginning of verse 25 says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Now, if you go on to read the following couple of verses, Jesus then speaks to his mother and the apostle John. So when verse 25 says that she stood near the cross, it quite literally means close enough to have a conversation. Now, the gospels don't record any of Mary's words from this moment, standing beneath the cross of her son. But I think her presence, the very fact that she is there, close enough to hear his voice, speaks to her continued posture of surrender and faith in God's plan. She'd been called to accompany her son during his earthly life, and she would do that until the very end. Mary's response of let it be to the angel at the Annunciation, I would argue, finds its fullest expression in her silent, let it be, standing at the foot of the cross. So how do we, as followers of Jesus, emulate this kind of faith? How do we live our lives in a similar posture of surrender to God's will? Like Mary, there will be moments in our life where we may feel called into something new, where we will sense God leading us in a certain direction, and we will have a choice to make and how we choose to follow. At other times, we are going to experience circumstances where we are just going to be handed something. The loss of a job, sudden diagnosis of someone, the death of a loved one, a global pandemic, you know, I don't know. And in that moment, we will not have the opportunity to choose our circumstances. But we can choose how we respond to them. When challenges come and They will. We know they will. Do we choose faith over fear? Do we choose trust over doubt? Do we choose surrender to the God who loves us over giving up and giving in to despair and hopelessness? When Mary responds to the angel Gabriel, let it be, she is actively choosing trust and surrender to God's will. But standing at the foot of the cross She is being a silent witness to what a life lived like in a posture of surrender looks like. Just over four years ago, when uh, our boys would have been seven and three and David was just three months old, 
It was a Thursday evening, and it was snowing. I still remember that. And I started to get worried because my husband was late home from work. At first, I just thought he was running behind. And to be honest, at first, I was kind of mad. And then I got worried. And as the minutes ticked by and I couldn't get a hold of him, the anxiety began to grow. Finally, after about an hour or so of trying to get in touch with him with no success, and as I was trying to figure out like what to do next, a police car drove into our driveway with no lights on. And two officers walked up to my front door. They'd come to tell me that Dennis had been in a car accident and that I needed to get someone for my kids and I needed to come to the hospital right away. When I got to the hospital, I discovered that things were pretty bad. Bad is sort of an understatement. They were, they were pretty awful. And there were no guarantees about what would happen next. And then the next few days were just this roller coaster of emotions of sorrow and uncertainty and then gratitude when he did pull through and begin what would be a long road of recovery. Now, I had done a pretty good job of holding it together for the first couple of days, but once it became clear that things were moving in the right direction of healing, which was great, the doctors and nurses that were caring for Dennis at the hospital started to make comments about things I would need to do and things to remember when he eventually came home. And it was at this point that I started to crack because it slowly dawned on me that I would not be bringing my husband home better or back to normal, but in a condition where he needed a lot of support and care. And on top of that, I had three little ones at home, including one that was just a three-month-old baby. And all those pent-up emotions that I had pushed aside to make it through the last few days came flooding at me all at once, and I realized that I was scared to death that I couldn't do it all, that I couldn't keep all the plates spinning. I mean, how was I going to manage Dennis's care and feed a baby five times a night and take care of a toddler and get the seven-year-old to school? It just felt like the world had rolled onto my shoulders. And on top of that, I felt guilty because I was upset, because I was so lucky that I even had the opportunity of bringing my loved one home when I know so many don't. At some point during one of these dark moments of self-doubt, it was actually Pastor Brad who called me on the phone. And you must have heard in my voice that I was not okay, that I was overwhelmed. And I didn't realize it, but at some point during our conversation, he decided that encouraging me over the phone wasn't good enough for him. And he'd actually jumped into his truck, continued to talk to me through Bluetooth, and then found me in a waiting room. And I just remember looking at him through tears and asking him the same question, that I had wrestled with for the past few days. How am I going to do this? Now, Brad could have offered me some cliche form of comfort. Like, it'll be fine, you'll be okay, things will get better, it's looking up. But he loves me too much to do that. He looked at me and said, you can't do this. You can't. Not on your own. And you need to stop thinking you can. But God has promised to be with you in the midst of this suffering and sadness. And right now you need to trust that he is bigger than this and he will be there with you through it. And because I'm a practical person, I looked at him and said, okay, Brad, but like how? How do I trust in God? Like, really, how do I trust in him? And Brad's response to me was, Bud, you surrender. You surrender each day to him, and then you ask him for help. You ask him to help you with one day at a time, and when you can't make it through a whole day, you ask him to just help you through the next moment. And moment by moment, God will be your strength, and he will uphold you. Over the next weeks and months, even when the days became very long or very difficult, I would remember that conversation and remind myself that God would help me through to the other side, one moment at a time. 
One of the verses I held on to during this period was Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. And it says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Someone needs to hear that today. Whatever deep waters you are going through, God is with you and he will not let the water sweep over your head. Now I'm sure if we had time, we could go around the room and we'd all have stories of God's faithfulness in our lives. So my encouragement to you this morning is regardless of your circumstances today, to trust in God. And if you, like me, are a practical person and you're wrestling with that question of how, I don't have it all figured out, but here's just a few suggestions. To live a life that is surrendered daily means we offer each day to him and then we cling to him through it. When you get up in the morning, begin your day by offering it back to him. Like literally, wake up and say, God, I offer you this day and everything in it. And then you hold on to him hard through his word, through prayer. You cling to him through community, through worship. You sing in the storm. And you cling to him through obedience, doing things his way and not our way. Mary knew that God's plan was better than anything she could have come up with for herself. And so she surrendered to his will both in those joyful places and the difficult ones. So my prayer for us today is that the posture of our lives would mirror hers. So today, may we, the church, choose faith over fear and trust in God moment by moment. And like Mary, may we choose to surrender our own will in order to fulfill his. Would you pray with me? Lord, our soul magnifies you and glorifies you. And we rejoice in you, Lord, our Savior, for you see us in our humanity. And yet you choose to bless us. For you, the mighty one, has done great things for us, and holy is your name. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the example of faith we find in Mother Mary, the one you chose to be held by and who walked with you throughout your life here on earth. Thank you for the sound of that cry. So Lord, May we, like her, choose to live a life of trust and surrender to your will. And it is in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So good. Hey, um, we're just going to take a second. We got Rachel and Annie and Brad. Come on up. We're just going to lay hands on, on Larissa. If, if you feel comfortable this morning, would you just stretch out a hand? To, to Larissa. We're going to thank her. We're going to bless her, pray over her. But God, thank you so much for this amazing time with your church this morning. We thank you for Larissa. We thank you for the Geniacs. Uh, such an incredible faith journey and seeing your faith uh, to us along the way. Thankful for Dennis, for health, and for wholeness. And uh, I pray that their story, God, we would, we would see your faithfulness in it. And so it would again, bring us to places and spaces where we would cry out for your healing touch in our lives and your faithfulness to us. And so we just pray that continued blessing over the Geniac household for everything that they do, everything they, that they put their hands to when it comes to work and family and fun. God, may they find you in it and may they find your blessing all throughout it. So um, we're thankful that we got this moment with Larissa this morning. Um, such a great teacher, such a great worship leader, and such a great mom. We're just so thankful for her.
Uh, bless her. Bless the geniacs. In your name, amen. 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 Exchange Church, so, so good. We love you. Hey, um, we got another guest speaker next week. It's going to be good. Um, I don't even think my wife knows who's coming to speak yet. But, babe, it was your idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Andy's excited. She, something just like a light went on. She's like, no way. We have an incredible guest speaker next week. Me and Andy will be leading worship. And uh, we just can't wait to see you guys. Here's, here's the deal. Um, keep inviting. Keep bringing out so many new faces. Um, there is a theater right next door that has 45 more seats. So give us a reason to go to another theater. Amen? Amen. Love you guys. Have a fantastic Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, also, to all the moms and the ladies in the place, we have a flower for you on the way out. So make sure that you grab that. We love you guys. Have a good one.